All right, uh, we're installing a gas valve box for this behind the stove. Uh, we're running a flexible gas line. This is Ward Flex, they call it, courtesy of Penn Supply. Um, we got a gas valve box as well with a trim kit. So you screw it in, you sheet rock, and you pop your access panel on. We'll have a valve in here um, that we can attach our flex to. It's nice and concealed, easier to push the stove back. Sorry, do that again? Just hold it up again one more time. So it'll be like that, it'll be sheet rocked in and then you can run your flex line from this valve to the stove. Right, right nice there. and concealed. It comes with a Ward Flex adapter on it. This is a Ward Flex box. Uh, we'll get this through here first. So usually, you know, whatever, you wanna keep these things somewhat low. Um, I'll put it at probably about, eh, that looks good nine inches to the top of the box is somewhat low because sometimes the stoves, I don't have my specs for the stove, I haven't picked that out, but sometimes they have a cutout, like it flush all the way back and then it'll be off down low. So you wanna keep it lower, low as possible. Um, so we'll put it there, we'll mount our box. Mount it tight to the, to the studs. Also, I've figured out my center for the stove and you gotta make sure your box isn't going to be behind halfway behind a cabin or something. And we'll attach the uh, Ward Flex adapter. So with this Ward Flex stuff, you cut, you take a razor knife, you go around in a circle. It's steel underneath here, so you don't have to worry about cutting it with a razor knife. Take a circle, then take a little slot out. And usually when, like I'm already, I'm already tied in up in the attic, so I don't have much wiggle room off my coil. I took a hacksaw to hack it off. You gotta be careful, this stuff, stuff is extremely sharp. And then I'll take my tubing cutter. And with this Ward Flex, when you're cutting this, only do it a little bit, tighten it a little bit and go around. And you'll hear it start to cut a little bit. You gotta be careful with this stuff. You can't tighten it too much. You hear that little crackling, and that means I'm cut for the most part. I'm cut probably three quarters of the way, and I'll just take it and do one of these jammers, and I got a nice clean cut there. Take that, and then you take your, your ring. Uh, where that's, so this acts as the nut for the, like the, instead of an adapter, this acts as the nut. You wanna get this, with the flange side up, snap it above the first ring. I'm gonna take this box off. So let's disconnect the box and be easier. So you take your ring, put it in the first rib up. Each gas, flexible gas company has different rings. You can't intermix them. So if you see there's one rib showing, and we'll take our adapter, shove it in there, and we'll get it started. and secured where it needs to be. Give me one second, I'll screw this and then take our, for these, for this gas pipe, if it's half inch pipe, we'll use a three quarter flat strap because it's thicker on the outside. Strap it coming down the wall because we won't put a screw through it. So it 
it's tough to get this thing perfectly straight out because it's going to keep playing in the box. Even if you had that stupid nut on it, it's still a pity. I'm going to live with that. And then once we sheet rock, well, we'll test it. Soap and water, we'll test the fitting. We'll sheet rock when it comes to the finish. We'll put this in a nice safe spot when it comes to the finish. Snap it on around the sheet rock. What do you mean test it with soap and water? You gotta test your fitting. So get a little bit of soap, a little bit of water, and a paintbrush, and then and then brush turn it on. The fitting. Well, no, just make sure the gaze is on to the valve. Right. And then test the fitting with the soap and water. Make sure nothing's bubbling out. Make sure, and if it bubbles real bad, you got a leak. Right. So that's Ward Flex adapter. All right, so we're running our exhaust exhaust fan or ex exhaust for the range hood. We ran it six inch. That way I'm covered. Some you get away with four inch, some you have to go to seven or eight, depends on how many CFMs it, the unit is. But I haven't picked mine out, so I'll just run six and go from there. Six is usually, you know, I'm not gonna get anything bigger than that. Um, we ran, so we ran six inch round duck. I just dropped a piece, a short piece down um, below. I, I screw my 90s on, three screws, and I'll even tape it if you want. Um, we came up, 90 it over, well, now we're on 90 up to the roof. Uh, we got our piece cut to length. We got our 90 on. Now we got to get our, our we got to cut our hole through the roof. So, in order to get the exact spot where we got to cut through the roof, I made a little plumb bob, homemade. <laughs> and we got a nut on the bottom. So all you got to do, you take this a, a nut tied to a string. And you're going to drop it down until it aligns with the center of the 90. What's the size of the hole that you got to put into the ceiling? Well, it's a six inch round duck, so you'll need at least six inch round. You just going to use a hole saw? Nah, I don't have a six and an eighth hole saw, so I'll just um, hack a square out, trace it, cut it out with a sawzall. That looks close enough there. We'll mark where we're gonna be. And then we take our trusty pilot drill. Uh, it's a small little bit. And we will drill up. You go on the roof and find your spot. All right, we uh, cut a hole through, uh, we lined up with our roof vent, we cut our shingles to match them underneath this top part, we'll put a little roof muck on these uh, exposed nails, throw a little roof muck down the side, and then we'll go in the bit in the attic and then just pipe that last piece up, we'll just stub it up three quarters of the way, call it a day. Alright, so we're, we're getting our measurement now, going through the roof. Um, this 90 piece is going to be our last connection point. Because we're gonna pipe up and then jam in. All they want you to do is stub above this roof about three quarters on the high side. Uh, they want you to snip it so it's um, pitched with the roof, the top of the tin. But we'll see what happens. Take our measurement to the high side. 14, we'll do three quarters. 14 and three quarters. And that's exactly what we got. Whoa. Because I estimate material is perfect. Money Mike. We will cut it down on a little bit of a pitch. I ain't going too crazy with it. It's just so the top doesn't block like this. The low part that stubs through doesn't block the exhaust going out. Yeah. A little bit of an angle dangle. That looks good enough. So let's take this piece off. Like I said, 
I like to put three screws in it. Obviously, always you want the pipe going in because it's going up. So every fitting's in, it's going up. The crimp band in. This is a factory crimp in. If you have to make one, they make this tool. Where my crimper tool go? Is it right near you? I'll, I'll get a video of it later. Picture. Yeah. It crimps the end of the pipe, so it's easier to go on. Just remember, folks, it ain't as easy as I make it seem. That's our give and go joint. I'll spin this up a little bit, not too much. Oh, that's just groovy. That's just groovy. Groovy, baby! Secure it, lock it in. Can you give me that flashlight? Three screws of fitting will do you good. I just got these white ones. You can get regular silver ones. I'm just that's what I had in the in the hizzy. I like to tape my joints too. Ten of you want. It's not the end of the world. This. This is just like, you're only getting the fumes out for cooking. You're not, it ain't really venting anything real. And you just blow When it. someone farts in the kitchen, you turn it on, it ain't a big deal. Okay. What was that Eddie Murphy movie? Uh, where he's... The Fat Guys? The Doolittles? No, yeah, all the fat people. Yeah, was it Doctor Doolittle? No. Nah. It's... Oh man, it's a flubber. Hercules, Hercules. Yeah. So when you when you got that family over. <laughs> oh, my baby too. Oh, now see what you made me do? God damn it! I messed up my pants. You can turn this up, turn this on for backup. Oh, they're flatulence. I gave it a little little pitch. You don't want it back pitch, but pitching down back to the direction it's coming. And then we'll secure it so it doesn't move around. I gotta throw some insulation up here. I just don't want it moving around. Obviously you want to get a metal band iron Sell it at plumbing supplies, you get it at Home Depot, wherever you want to get it. That's all she wrote. Now it's nice and secure. And we only have a stub down below, and we'll tie that in when we put the range hood on the finish. All right, Mikey, how we do today? All right. All right. We got our gas line in, we got our range hood exhaust in, and we sheet rock. 99% of the kitchen still not fully. Wow. I gotta run. I gotta run my electric for my lights. I didn't light them out yet, so and then I gotta. What do you do? Lighting. Recess lighting in here? Mm-hmm. Right. Two pendulums, pendulum, whatever you want to call them. Over uh, the island. Yeah, this is the island. That's our electrical. All right, very cool. Looking good. Making progress.